Today, we will be making a hinged 3D shadow box with a secret compartment featuring the amazing Graphic 45 Nutcracker Suite Deluxe Collector's Edition Pad. Hi everyone, it's Maddie Azar with Spectrum Art Creations. We will be looking into Clara's living room as she dances with her beloved Nutcracker. This project is one that will be a keepsake and enjoyed year after year, and we'll be putting it together step by step so it's perfect for all levels of crafters. Remember, you can always speed up or pause the video as needed, and the links will be down below as well for the products. So let's jump right in by gathering our supplies, and then we'll start creating right along with step one. In step one, we're going to use our Graphic 45 black chipboard um, and cut it down to half inch strips. We're going to need 12 of those. We're going to grab eight of those strips and we're going to cut them down to eight and three quarters. Now that the eight strips are cut, we're going to grab four of those and glue them together, and then another four and glue those together. So when we are done, we are going to have two sets that have four strips glued together. The last four remaining strips, we're going to cut down to four and five eighths of an inch. That means we're going to end up with eight pieces total out of those four strips. We will take those and we'll glue them together in sets of four. Again, we'll end up with two sets of four strips glued together. So we now have our frames for our box to create the faux bottom or secret compartment. We'll try those on for fit to make sure that we have a nice fit. If there is a little bit of a gap, that's perfectly okay. Um, however, if it is way too tight, you might want to trim um, a little bit off. Using our Graphic 45 black cardstock, we're going to cut two pieces that measure four and three quarters by eight and three quarters. We're also going to use our Graphic 45 linen trim and we are going to cut four inches. Thank you. 
finding your center we're going to grab our trim fold it in half and adhere it to the bottom half of our cardstock doesn't require a ruler you can always just eyeball it then we're going to grab the next cover and we're going to sandwich our trim that has been folded in half to create a loop in between those two pieces of cardstock We're going to find the gorgeous Ginger Delights 12 by 12 page in our collection and we're going to cut that to be eight and a half inches tall and of course 12 inches wide. From the left hand side we're going to cut four and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. The remaining right side will be seven and a half by eight and a half. Working with the right side, we are going to trim that down a little bit more. We're going to trim it down to six and a quarter by eight and a half inches. We will take that new piece that is now six and a quarter by eight and a half over to our scoreboard and we're going to score from the left hand side at one and a half inches. From the remaining top piece of the Ginger Delights, we are going to be needing two pieces that are going to be four and seven eighths by two inches tall. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the height. So I'm gonna take that to my cutter and I'm gonna get it down to two inches tall. Then I'm going to mark at four and seven eighths and I'll need two pieces. So when you are done, that top piece would have been cut into the following pieces. And we are going to be keeping those two pieces that would four and seven eighths by two inches tall. The next cuts, we will get another 12 by 12 page of Gender Delights, and we're going to cut two sets of two inch tall strips. So we'll end up with two strips from the bottom that are going to be two inches tall by 12 inches wide. We are now going to cut those two inch strips into eight and three quarters of an inch wide. And now we will bring back all of our pieces, including that original piece that we had cut to four and a half by eight and a half. So now we have the following six pieces cut. Next, we're gonna grab our Christmas March. We're gonna use the red side and we're going to make the bottom inside box cover. So we're gonna cut one piece that is going to be eight and three quarters tall by four and three quarters wide. Now that panel might seem a little bit short or narrow on the sides, but that's perfectly okay because remember, we are going to be inserting our faux bottom chipboard pieces and that's going to cover those sides. And now it is time to distress. I'll be using the gorgeous Graphic 45 Classic Black Hybrid Ink Pad to open it simply look on the bottom of the top lid there's a little lip right there all you have to do is push up on that to open it Thank you. 
with the panels all distressed, we are going to distress the outside of our box as well. All you need to do is distress the edges. Next, we will glue down our cover panels and create our secret faux bottom. We will start by adhering the bottom panel, and then we're going to glue down our side panels. I will leave most of the footage. Uh, however, I am going to speed through it. Always remember that you have the option of pausing uh, if you want to be able to catch up or of course to fast forward if you need to, if you are all caught up. When it comes to adhering our side panels, it is important that we are lining them up with the top of our box. So we're concerned about the top and not so much the bottom because the bottom, remember, is going to get covered by our black chipboard pieces. And now it is time to move on to creating our chipboard secret bottom lip um, edges. So we're going to do that by grabbing our four chipboard pieces and adhering them to the four walls. Next, we're going to cover our faux bottom door. Um, it is the one with the trim loop that we have made. We're going to cover the bottom of it and then we're going to add the top which is going to have the hinge piece. Now, you don't necessarily have to have it hinged. If you prefer not to, you can just, you know, not do the little hinge piece but I like for it to actually be stable and be on there um, so it doesn't ever fall out. But again, that's totally a preference. So as you can see here, it is a perfect fit. And again, see, it doesn't have to be hinged. It can just kind of stay in place if you like that look. I'm gonna hinge mine just because I like to have it stable. Now, when it comes to gluing it onto our box, there really is no right way. You can do the wall first and then the cover, cover the lid, or you can glue your lid um, panel cover first and then glue the hinge to the wall. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is you have to butt up that crease line right to the edge so that when you glue it down, 
you do not end up with extra space um, or a hinge that doesn't actually touch the wall. Next, we're going to work on the top lid. We're gonna turn our top box lid into a hinge top. So using our craft knife, we're gonna open up one side of the box. So we're gonna do that and create a hinge by cutting two of the corners. And then we're gonna use a nail file to smooth out any um, remaining you know, rough edges. And so we're gonna have a nice complete finish to that hinge. Now finding our Land of Sweets 12 by 12 sheet, we are going to cut two panels, measuring five by nine. Now we're gonna cut two of those. One's gonna be for the inside lid, uh, the bottom of the inside lid, the inside. And then the second one is going to be for the bottom bottom of our box. So we'll save that second piece for later. Using some washi or some masking tape, we're going to temporarily hold that panel in place so that we can trace the window from the outside, from the top. With the window now traced, we can look at our lines and if we need to, we can always um, use our ruler to ensure that we have really nice solid lines for us to follow along. Now, there are two ways that we can cut um, the window, two very basic ways. The, I use the beginner beginner way because I'm not the best with the craft knife. And that is first I cut an X from corner to corner basically and then I cut my straight lines. This just makes it easier for me. However, another way of doing that is either freehanding it, if you're really good with the craft knife, or you can also use your metal ruler, something with a nice straight edge, and you know just use that as a guide for your craft knife. Now keep in mind that we're gonna have to do a little bit of cleaning up. Um, since we've traced the lid, we are going to have to shave a little bit off. So using your fuzzy cutting scissors or your um, you know, small scissors, you want to go in with those detail scissors and just trim off any excess. It doesn't take a whole lot. As you can see, I have little shavings there to the right side by my ruler. Next, we're going to distress both of the panels that we just cut plus the box lid.
In order to be able to distress the inside nooks and crannies, it's impossible to get a dauber in there. So I use a paintbrush and my G45 ink. Next, we're going to look for the Sugar Plum Fairy 12 by 12 paper. This is going to be our front outside cover for our lid. Now, all we need to do is cut a five by nine piece, that's five inches wide by nine inches tall. And very simply, we're going to grab the lid cover that we've already done and trace that. I'm using some clips to hold it in place and a pencil to trace around. When it's time to cut it, the one thing that we do need to remember once again, because we've traced, we need to make sure that we cut on the inside of the line, okay? And then if need be, of course, we can once again, um, just trim off any excess that we might need to trim off. And I'm simply using my ruler and pencil to retrace some of the lines where it was kind of light. Um, again, as it gets darker for me here in the art studio, sometimes it's a little bit hard to see with the lighting. So just to make sure that I get a nice clean cut, I'm going to retrace and darken that line. Now here's another way to cut that inside rectangle. I'm simply using my detail scissors, my fussy cutting scissors, and I am going around the edge. Um, this actually also helps you save a little bit more of the paper than the X cut, but again, it's all a matter of what is comfortable for you. Next, we're going to cut three more pieces from our Sugar Plum Fairy. We're going to cut two pieces that are gonna measure one by nine, and one piece that is gonna measure two by nine. These will be the cover panels to the outside of our box on the long sides. And of course, we will distress those pieces as well. From the remaining piece, we're going to cut four more pieces of paper, four more panels measuring five and one eighth by one inch. These are going to be the outside side covers. And of course, we will proceed to distress those as well. Now with our panels all done, we are going to start by adhering our bottom, bottom panel. And then we're going to adhere the side panels. Now the exception to this is going to be the panel that is going to go on the hinge side of our lid. So that piece that is two by nine, we're going to leave that off to the side for now.
From a scratch piece of paper, we are going to cut out a piece that is going to measure four and a half by eight and a half. This is going to serve as our template in order for us to be able to cut out exactly the image that we want from the gorgeous Nutcracker Suite 12 by 12 page. This is a signature page. Um, we're going to look for that green line up at the top in order to line up the top of our template. And then we're going to line up the left hand side. We're going to bring that over to the Nutcracker shoulder, right where his shoulder is. And we're going to trace that and we're going to cut it out. So this way we have saved the Nutcracker for later use. And now we have the beautiful scene with Clara, um, obviously playing with the Nutcracker in front of the Christmas tree and with the grandfather clock. So we have our setting where we are kind of looking into the living room through the window and we see Clara. And now we have our gorgeous Christmas scene. Now we are going to adhere that down. Uh, and again, you can distress, not distress. Um, since we've already distressed the outer panel, it is not necessary to distress this one. But again, always a matter of preference. Next, from our second Nutcracker Suite piece, we're going to cut out Clara and Clara only. We're going to try and save the clock, try to save the Nutcracker Suite banner on the bottom, basically try to save everything but Clara. We're going to need Clara as well as some of the curtains in order to create our 3D illusion. Once again, we're looking in through the window in the living room from the outside and we can see like the grandfather clock in the foreground and the other um, set of windows and curtains in the foreground and the Christmas tree, but Clara is dancing in front of us. So she's up further um, in front of the window than the rest of the living room setting. Next, we're going to cut the center panel of that curtain. So that center piece where it swoops down, we're going to cut that because that's gonna go on the inside of our window.
And to create a little bit of texture, I'm going to go back and forth on that curtain fringe at the bottom. I'm going to be using some washi tape in order to just hold the window in place or that curtain, excuse me, in place so I can see just how low or how high I want it to be. I don't want it to be too low because I wanna be able to see the curtain in the back as well, that little swag that droops down as well in the back. So I am just kind of playing with the height of it to, to ensure that I am not too high, I am not too low, and I am still able to see all the elements I want to see. Next, we're also going to cut the curtains at the top on the left and on the right hand side. So when we are all done from this 12 by 12, we would have cut Clara, we would have cut the center curtain, and then we would have cut the top curtain on the left and on the right as well. So we'll have four pieces from this 12 by 12 page. And now we will need two more fussy cut elements. From our Holiday Magic page, on the left-hand side, we're going to cut the presents from that Christmas little tag. And from the Enchanting Sentiments page, we're gonna find the top left-hand side presents tag, and we're going to cut those presents as well. And then, of course, we will distress our pieces. And so when we are done, we will have the following six pieces cut and distressed ready for our layering to create our 3D scene. Using our foam tape or 3D dots, we are going to fill Clara in order to create our layering. So we want to make sure we get her shoes, we get the nutcracker, we basically get all of the um, foam dots everywhere so that we can create a nice um, 3D scene. Now, if your foam dots are a little bit on the flatter side, you might want to actually double up on those foam dots in order to create a larger or bigger relief. Our goal being, of course, to create depth so that it looks like Clara is closer to the window and the living room setting and the grandfather clock are all a backdrop. And so with the backings removed, it is now time to bring in Clara. And just very carefully aligning her as best as possible, we are going to adhere her down onto those 3D dot foam dots, and we are going to get a magnificent 3D look. And now it's time to bring in the presents. We're going to start with the one that has the large green bottom gift. Okay, so it's got a, the gift at the bottom is green. We're going to start with that one and we're going to apply foam dots all over that one. So we're gonna make sure that that one is nicely covered and propped up on 3D dots. Now we are going to be working our way up so the the set of gifts that has the purple on the bottom and the blue that's still on the table that's going to be the top layer that's going to be at the top and it's going to be all the way on the bottom right hand corner 
this one is going to go behind that one. So it's going to be about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. And I'm trying to show you here just how far it's gonna come up right to about there. Because after this one, we're going to bring in the other set of gifts. And that's gonna be, as you can see there, all the way on the bottom right hand side and that one's going to be one tier up from the one that we just did so basically you're going to have three layers of gifts you're going to have the top one which has got you know the purple and the blue you're going to have one in the middle which is going to be the one with the green gift that we just put down and then of course you're going to have the paper backdrop which has gifts as well so it's going to look like there are gifts all over the place at different heights and that's the look that we're going for So now we've done our first layer of the 3D foam dots. And in order to create that next tier, we're going to now add a second um, set of foam dots to this. So we're gonna double them up in order for that to be propped up even higher. Now to create our window, we're going to use a piece of acetate that is going to be four and a half inches wide by eight inches tall. This is going to give us the illusion of glass. Now to adhere the acetate, I'm going to be using my acrylic glue. If you have any questions about anything that I use or anything that I am doing, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Plus, we love to hear from you, so your feedback and your comments are always appreciated. Our goal here is to create the exact same setting that we have in the backdrop picture. So if you look behind Clara, she's got curtains, she's got the top swag, and she's got a glass window with panels on it. And so we're going to try and recreate that exact same look in the front. With our glass down, it is now time for our curtains. We wanna make sure that the hinge is on the left hand side. This way, we are not going to glue our curtains upside down. Again, I'm gonna be using tape to temporarily you know, hold my curtains in place. So I have a temporary placement. Uh, and that way I can actually move my curtains as need, up, down, left, right. And when I am happy with the top placement and everything looks good, I'm going to mark it so I know exactly where to glue it down. I'm gonna do the same thing with my left and my right. And then of course, I'm going to trim down as needed. You go with the look that you prefer. This is where um, your own personal taste comes into play. Uh, you can decide how much of the curtains you want to show. But now we have a window that looks more and more like an actual window, right? It's got the curtains, it's got the glass. It looks like once again, we're looking inside of that living room.
Our curtains are hung and now it's time to bring that back cover and we're going to adhere that in order to hide our acetate and our curtains. Of course, it's optional. Um, you don't have to cover it, but honestly, I think that it is nice to see the project nice and finished, um, including, you know, hiding any kind of an underside. I didn't do the side walls of the inside of the lid. However, you most certainly can. We have plenty of scraps to do that. So that is an option. I'm going to try and keep the box either on the top left hand side or on the bottom right hand side to avoid the glare. Unfortunately, you can see that ring light uh, right in the center of the acetate, which makes it a little hard to film, but it is now time to attach our front panel. Now, before we do that, we're going to choose. We have our window, but do you want to actually create window panes? Kind of like mimicking the one that is on the back there. Um, if you do, all we're going to do is we're going to use our leftover scraps and create narrow, tiny, um, skinny strips and what makes this really nice is that now we're going to have even another layer if you should decide to do the window panes because you're going to have the window panes, then the glass, then the curtains behind that, then Clara, then you're going to have the backdrop, which of course has the illusion of having the clock in front and then um, the window at the back window as another dimension. So it is really nice and layered a very nice 3D um, effect going back. Now when it comes time to do your panels, you can choose how many panels you want to do. Do you want to do four? Um, do you want to do six? Do you want to do how many or none? I am choosing to use um, three horizontal and one vertical strip for my look. Now that I've decided the look that I'm going for, I am simply going to bring out my ruler and I'm going to mark the center and from the center of both, whether it's the you know right and left side or the top and bottom, then I'm going to be marking in increments of half an inch or an inch. Remember, all of this is going to get covered once we glue down our panel. So the front panel that is. So you can make nice pencil markings, just don't get too close to obviously the edges. But by creating this grid, it's going to allow me to decide on the placement of my uh, window paint strips. Keeping in mind what I am doing is always looking for the placement so that it does not cover Clara, okay? So whether it's above or below uh, Clara's face, that's what I'm aiming for, that if I'm looking at it straight on or even a little bit from the sides or a little bit tilted top and bottom, I can still see Clara in frame. Now, before committing to glue down my window panes, I am going to use tape once again to hold it in place so I can make 100% sure that everything looks perfect before I commit.
And again, our goal is to try to replicate uh, the back window. So by using the purple strips, we are creating the exact same look and with the curtains being red as well, we're creating the exact same look as that window in the back. So it looks like it's one cohesive house, one cohesive room. When you are happy with the placement, then we are ready to simply glue down our window panes. And now that everything looks perfect and leveled, we can glue down our front window panel. With our front cover window panel done, it is now time to work on our hinge mechanism. Before we glue the decorative piece, we need to glue our hinge lid to the box. I did try to use art glitter glue and then I just realized this is going to be a working piece, a mechanism, so I wanted to have some great assurance that this was going to stay down for years to come, so I did bring in my extra forte glue. So my recommendation is for you to either use a very strong adhesive or maybe a combination of two to ensure that the wear over the years is going to um, still keep your box in working condition. And we now have our front lid hinged, which is amazing because now it's a hinge box, but we now need to add our last decorative piece. And that is going to cover that left-hand side hinge side. So once again, breaking out our adhesive, everything has been distressed already. It is time to attach our last decorative piece. And just like that, we have now created a hinged 3D shadow box with a secret compartment. I decided to add a traveler's journal using the scraps from our um, project, as well as using the beautiful nutcracker from that 12 by 12 signature page. Of course, you can always add ephemera, you can add gifts, you can fill it with family photos and recipes throughout the years. 
this project is one that will be enjoyed year after year. You can always bring it out to decorate your mantle, your fireplace, or again, to give as a gift for a loved one. So whether you're making one for yourself or you're giving one away, or perhaps you're choosing to sell it at a Christmas market, this is going to be a project that you will surely enjoy making. Thank you so much for joining us today in the art studio. We hope you have enjoyed it. We would love to get some feedback and hear back from you guys. If you've made one, if you'd like to make one, what your thoughts are. There are so many lovely collections that can be used um, with this exact same process to kind of look out into a garden perhaps or to look out into a wintry scene. So take a look at your graphic 45 paper pads and see what you would like to make next. Again, thank you for joining us here in the studio. You guys all have a fun, creative, and blessed day.